Hi, it's Paddy Hirsch, Senior Editor at Marketplace, here to talk about ratings agencies. Right now we have an inquiry going on in Capitol Hill. People are trying to find out what happened during the financial crisis and what caused it. And a lot of people are pointing the finger at the ratings agencies and they're saying that you know they basically rated uh, securities inaccurately. Other people are actually taking another tack and saying that uh, ratings agencies have an inappropriate relationship with their clients and there is actually a conflict of interest there. So let's see if we can explain how this conflict of interest works. But before I start, I should say that I did actually used to work for Standard & Poor's for many years, a former employee, just to get that out of the way, full disclosure. Anyway, so imagine yourself on a nice sunny day and uh, imagine meeting our friend Jill, who's walking around the neighbourhood and she's looking for a house to buy. And she sees a very nice house up on the hill, likes the look of it, pops up to see who's in there and meets the owner, whose name is Jack. Okay, here's Jack. And he says, needs a bit of a shave, he says that my house is worth a million dollars. She's like, wow, a million dollars, wow. How do you get that? She says, well, you know, they're looking around the market and how other um, homes have sold around here and the renovations that I've done and this and that, but don't take my word for it. I have got an independent appraisal of this house from, let's say, the Johns Corporation, saying that this house is worth a million dollars. Look, here's a piece of paper, it says it. Now, of course, if you're a Jill, you're going to be saying, hang on a second, why, why would I trust this? Of course, I've heard of the Johns Corporation, but why would I necessarily trust this piece of paper? How do I know that you haven't, you know, some kind of a special deal? Maybe you've got a whole bunch of houses that you want to sell and, you know, the Johns is working with you, so it's given you a, a decent appraisal on the home. I mean, how, how, why could I trust? Why would I trust that? Okay, why would I trust a rating that's been put on the house or a valuation that's been put on the house whenever you, the seller, has hired the person or is paying the person to provide that, uh, that valuation. Doesn't make any sense, right? And that is at the heart of what people say the conflict of interest between uh, the ratings agencies and their clients is. Okay, this, this is, that's at the center of it, okay? The fact that it is the ratings agency or the, it is the seller of a security that pays the ratings agency to rate that security. So how does that work? Well, if we uh, skip, skip, skip to the next week, all right? And uh, here, everyone's in the office now. Here's Jack, he's in the office. And uh, he's smiling, he's actually shaving himself a little bit today. And uh, when Jack is in the office, what he does, he continues, he, instead of selling houses, he actually sells mortgage-backed securities. So here's our big bag of mortgage-backed securities, and we know what they are, it's like a, a block of mortgages, okay, off which the uh, structure of sells bonds. And these bonds are rated by ratings agencies. Uh, maybe triple A, double A, triple B, double B, whatever the, um, the ratings agency thinks. And there are three ratings agencies that are selected by the government to actually put ratings on these things. And these are Mr. Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch. Okay, there are other ratings agencies out there, but these are the three main ratings agencies. These are the NRSROs as they're called, and they are mandated by the government. Now who's Jack selling these securities to? Well, of course, he's uh, selling them to our friend Jill, because she happens to be a pension fund manager. She has with her glasses on, looking at the computer. Now Jill's a smart woman, she buys a lot of securities, so she can look at securities and you know, she has an idea what she, uh, she thinks that they're worth. But Jill has a bit of a problem. The first problem is, is that like most pension fund managers, she is required by the covenants in her pension fund to buy securities that are rated by Standard & Poor's or Moody's or it's sometimes Fitch. But in the vast majority of cases, she's required to have a rating on the securities before she buys them. So she's locked in to buying this stuff. She can't go off and buy securities from somewhere else. She has to buy uh, rated securities. That's the first thing. She's kind of locked into this deal in a way. Okay. The second thing is, she's looking at the situation. She's saying, hang on a second. This looks a lot like the situation with, my, with that house I was looking at. The seller, Jack... Is, in, is, is dealing with the, uh, has, has actually bought the ratings, well not bought the ratings, but is working with the ratings agency who supplies the ratings. Jack pays money to those ratings agencies to provide the ratings. Okay, so he is, he is kind of part of the uh, process of actually getting these things rated, and uh, which Jill presumably has to, to some extent, trust before she can buy them. All right, now here's the issue, or another part of the issue is that these three ratings agencies are competing for business, okay? And, you know, Jack isn't just issuing one set of securities. He might be issuing securities all the way down the line. He might be a very big institution who could be issuing securities for years. So there's a bit of an incentive there, you might think, for uh, one of these ratings agencies or for the ratings agencies to compete for Jack's business. 
So how might they compete? They can do a number of things, but one of the things that people allege they might have done is perhaps, you know, give a good rating to securities. You know, uh, give a, you know, be, be a little, actually be a little gentler on the ratings. Like say, for example, um, Standard Poor's might say, you know, this AAA here, that's, that's a, we would say that's AA. But Moody's is like, no, no, that's, we'll, we'll give that AAA. And because they're being gentle, uh, Jack might say, huh, they're more likely to sell these securities and therefore we'll do more business with, uh, with Moody's down the line. Or say they take the Standard & Poor's rating, which is hard, and then the securities are hard to sell. They might say, you know what, we don't want to do business with Standard & Poor's anymore. It's difficult to sell securities when they've been rated by S&P. We're going to go with Fitch instead. Okay, so you can see why people talk about the, that conflict of interest. That's a big problem for Jill, of course, because she's got, to, she's got to deal with a lot of, got to buy a lot of securities. And maybe she is inclined to trust what the rating agencies say. But if she's trusting what the ratings agencies say, and then the ratings agencies have been in collusion with the seller, you know, it's, it could give her a bit of a problem. Now, we're all big boys here, big boys and girls, all right? And Jill is just as much of a big girl as anybody else, okay? She understands that there is a possibility, or she understands the argument for uh, this conflict of interest here. So what does she do? If she's smart, she'll do her own research. She'll do a great deal of her own research and she'll make sure that she's happy that these ratings provided by the ratings agencies are accurate. But here's the problem. During the bust or before the bust, whenever everybody was selling mortgage-backed securities and hedge fund investors and pension fund investors were falling over themselves to buy it, they didn't have the time to do this research. Okay, they didn't take the time to, to look into these securities to make sure that, they were, that the ratings were in fact accurate. And we now know in the end that that is what has left all of us very badly needing a drink.